So gas molecules have generally different properties than that of liquid molecules or solid molecules. Now in this lecture, I'm going to give a brief introduction to the gas state. So gas molecules travel at very, very high velocities at approximately 1,000 miles per hour or 480 meters per second. Now that means if you allow a single gas molecule to travel from New York to California without being interrupted, it would take it about three hours to get there versus a car that would take days and days. And so because of this high speed, they feel very little force from other gas molecules. And that means very little intermolecular bonding. Remember, the reason water is held together or any other solid is due to intermolecular bonding between the molecules. Now in gas molecules, we don't have that. Because the molecules move at high speeds, when they pass each other, they don't really feel too much force. So they don't bond. Let's look at the second thing. So gases are compressible. And that's because they take up much less volume than the volume of the container that they are in. For example, let's look at this big ball, right? So inside this ball we have air. And if you were to push this guy in, I could easily, to some point, push this ball in. Now if this, if the inside was replaced with, say, solid or a liquid, I wouldn't be able to push it without changing the volume. Notice how when I'm pushing this, I'm not really affecting the volume too much, right? And that's why I'm able to push it. I'm compressing it. And the reason for that is this following idea. Now, the volume of the inside of the ball is much greater than the volume that is taken up by these molecules. In other words, any two molecules at any given time are very far apart. So when I compress this ball, these molecules have lots of room to get closer, right? So this molecule gets closer, this one gets closer, this one gets, cl uh, gets closer, and eventually they all get closer so I could push them in. Now, if this guy was replaced with liquid or solid, liquid and solid is much more dense. And that means I would not be able to push them together because all the molecules are close together. And that leads straight to the third point. Gas molecules exert a force on whatever they hit, and this force can be calculated in terms of pressure. So let's go back to this example, right? So when I take my ball and I push this ball, I could only push it to a certain extent. At some point, I can't push it any further unless I exert a stronger force. Well, why is that? Well, the reason for that is because all these molecules are moving at tremendous velocities and every time they hit the container, hit the walls, they exert a force or a pressure. Pressure is simply force per some given area. And that means the added effect of all these molecules hitting the wall will be tremendous. And that's exactly why I can't push this ball uh, any further than say this. Right? So. Whenever we talk about force of molecules, force of gas molecules, we really want to talk about the pressure. And so when we talk about things like vapor pressure of a gas, vapor pressure is exactly this. It's the force that these molecules exert on the walls of the container at equilibrium. That's vapor pressure. So let's jump into number or part D. So gas molecules expand into container. And that's because whenever, say, say I have this container, inside this container I have air, if I open this up, what will happen to the gas molecules? Well, remember, gas molecules are moving at high speeds. <coughs> so if I open something up, they will escape. And also, because they're moving at high speeds, they don't feel intermolecular attractions. So there's nothing stopping them from exiting into the container. So they can completely expand the container. Um, and that means, on a similar note, different gases will mix completely because there is no intermolecular interactions between any two gas molecules. Now compare this to liquids and solids, right? If I take the same container of liquid and I spill it into the room, what will happen? Well, they won't escape. They will just uh, create a small puddle 
and they all stayed there, right? That's because they do experience intermolecular attractions and they don't have high velocities or high translational speeds. And that means these intermolecular attractions and low velocities will keep the molecules together. Now, of course, some of these guys will have enough kinetic energy to escape into the environment, but that's a different idea. That's called evaporation. And when you evaporate a, from a liquid to a gas, the gas gains that high velocity, escapes, and now it no longer experiences any intermolecular attractions. And the final thing I want to look at is the following. Now, we normally describe gases using a few things. Temperature, and later we'll see how temperature and kinetic energy or speed of our molecules are related. Pressure of our gas, the pressure that the gas exerts on the walls of the container. Volume that the gas fills up. And the number of molecules, normally in terms of moles.